and here, folks. At the end of the day, why do special interests want to bring in more low-skilled workers, and why historically? Yeah, I'm not asking for common sense. I'm asking for specific. Well, I think specific it's very clear, data. Glenn, that you're not how asking many, for common how sense. How but if I could just sense. answer, if I could just answer your common question, I named, I named, I named the studies, Glenn. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn. Tell me Glenn. The, tell me Glenn. The, I named the studies. No, I named the studies. I asked you for a statistic. Can you tell Glenn, me how many? The, how maybe many we'll make a carve out in the bill yeah. that says the New York Times can hire all the low skilled, less paid workers they want from other countries and see how you feel then about low wage substitution. This is a reality that's no, happening in our country. No, maybe Times. it's time we had compassion, Glenn, for American workers. Oh, I, I, President Trump has met with American workers who've oh, been replaced by foreign yeah, workers and ask, ask, ask them, ask them how this has affected I'm their asking, lives. Asking Look at, I. I just told you. Low-skilled jobs that Americans might otherwise have. Why? The I mean, if you look first, first of all, if you look at the if you look at the premise, Glenn, of bringing in low-skilled labor, it's based on the idea that there's a labor shortage for lower-skilled jobs. There isn't. The number of people living in the United States in the working ages who aren't working today is at a record high. One in four Americans, or almost one in four Americans, between the ages of 25 and 54, aren't even employed. 